let's imagine that this is a flat plate being hit by a flow of air. Certainly the plate is just going to get pushed backwards by drag. You can think of this as your hand sticking out the car door window and being pushed back. Now if you were to flatten it back instead, like a flat plate and flow, then it's just going to go up and around and, and you're not going to feel much of the effect of the drag. But if you want to feel some lift, you're going to have to put a little bit of an angle to it. Um, then you'll feel your, your hand lift up a little bit as it's hitting the flow out your car window. Uh, but it's also going to get pushed back at the same time. And so typically a lift to drag ratio for a flat plate is around 10. And we can do much better than this if you use an airfoil shape. So this is an NACA4421 airfoil. And in this case, the airflow is going to cause some of the flow is going to go up and over, and some is going to go under. And the flow that goes over is going to experience a longer path than the flow that went under. And this is going to cause a pressure drop on the upper side of the airfoil, which causes a lift force. And this lift force is going up. Of course, there's still some drag going in the direction of the flow. We're going to call this FL and FD. But for a case of an airfoil, the lift-drag ratio is more like on the order of 100 rather than 10 for a flat plate. And this is what is used in all commercial aircraft and wind turbines, is some kind of airfoil shape. 